and welcome to a brand new episode of New Start Monday Knits. It's a long weekend here, so it has been a holiday for me here today, and I've had a very relaxing day, just knitting, just knitting. <laughs> Pretty much that's what I've been doing. So I hope everybody else who is uh, in Canada has had a great long weekend as well. The weather's been really nice, very summery for sure. So I'll just wait for a couple minutes for a few people to join us live, but I'll give you a little recap of what we're going to talk about. I put up another Instagram poll and shared the poll in uh, my Instagram post and over on Wildflower Will's Facebook page. Had two skeins of yarn asking you which one should be this week's new cast on for a new stuffy for the Fiber Friends podcast, Knit Along, that is still going on right through until next Monday, May 31st. So if anybody else wants to join in, there's lots of time to cast on a little toy, a gnome, anything stuffed, and join us over on the Ravelry group, the Fiber Friends Ravelry group. There's a chit chat thread and there is a finish thread because some people have been finishing already. They're super quick. So I'll show you what the winning yarn is. I will give you a little update on last week's new start yarn and what the new project is and my toy knit along. There is the other big project that I've been working on this week has been my summer top, but I am going to leave you in suspense on that one. I'm not going to show it to you because Jocelyn from Northern Knits Podcast and I will be live here next Thursday, I think. My gosh, the weeks are, weeks are quickly disappearing on me. And we are going to be showing the grand reveal of our May works in progress. We, I think we have both said we were going to have a sweater finished. So next week you will see if we, if we kept our goal, if we made it. Last month we did not. Jocelyn and I both set like these huge goals and we did not not achieve them which is okay we got lots of knitting done so it's, it's you know it's a win-win no matter what right but i am hoping for a finish so that is june the third the first thursday of the month jocelyn and i always get together and chat about our current whips and how much we have got finished so i hope everybody here has had a great knitting week as well since we were chatting last monday so let's start right in with the winning yarn the two skeins I pulled out of my stash this morning were both sock yarn. This one here is a heavier weight though. It looks fairly thick. I'm sure I used this to um, make socks for my daughter a lot of years ago. It's a Regia yarn softy and it definitely is soft. It's very fluffy and soft. It was fun to knit with. I think this was the first pair of socks that I knit using a little nine inch circular needle and I loved it. So this is I think more like a, a six ply sock yarn. Not sure what it says. I'm not even sure if this is still available, if it's sold anywhere. What is this telling me? 39% super wash wool, 61% polyamide. Anyways, it feels really soft. We would make a nice cowl too, but I'm going to make this or this, I'm not giving it away quite yet, into a new stuffy, either a, a kitten or a bunny for this week's little toy that I'm going to cast on. The second skein of yarn I thought I would pull out is this really pretty one from The Loving Path. When I bought this a couple of years ago from Debbie at the Loving Path, I had a plan for this to be a two color shawl. I'm not sure whether I have a green that I was going to pair with it and I never got around to it. Anyway, so I was trying to think of what would make a cute stuffed animal, something fluffy or something sparkly. I don't think the sparkles really, oh, can you see some sparkle there? I don't think the sparkles really showed up in the Instagram picture. But there is some sparkles there. So anyways, this is where I always feel like I need a drum roll. Again, it wasn't super close this week. I think last week's was really close. The last couple of weeks have been pretty close. This one was definitely sided one way or another. 
and the winning yarn is the pink. So we are going to have a fluffy pink, either a cat or a bunny. I haven't decided which pattern I'm going to use. There was a cat pattern. I think it was. Hi, Lisa and Sabrina. I saw you pop in, Sabrina. You like them both? There was a handful of people that said, use them both. So I won't use the, them both in the same project just because the weight of yarn is different, but I could. I may still use the pink as a sparkly stuffy. We'll see. But I think this will make a really cute. I think I'm leaning towards the bunny. And the bunny that I'm thinking of, I'm not sure exactly what the name of it. Oh, darn. I don't know exactly what the name of it is. Let me see if I can pull it up here on Ravelry. The designer was Rebecca Danger. I had totally forgotten about her as a toy designer until Cheryl mentioned her during the Fiber Friends podcast on the weekend. And I'm like, as soon as she mentioned her, I'm like, I totally remember her. And it was from quite a few years ago, but she was one of the first ones that I remember Hey, Valerie, um, doing monster knitting. Hold on. I'm just going to type in here. Rebecca Danger. I know she has a website called Danger Crafts. And let's see if I can find her. There. Okay, so she's got lots. I just pulled her up on Ravelry. Oh, Bunny Nugget. That's what I'm thinking. It's the very first one that comes up and they're really tiny, just kind of look like a squarish kind of body. And they've got really pointy, skinny ears, kind of look like egg cord kind of ears. Anyways, they're cute. And I think I've either, either had that pattern printed out before. I don't know as I've knit it, but it must've been on my to-do list. So I think I'm going to actually get around to doing it. She's got lots of really cute monsters. And, oh my goodness, this looks like a mermaid, you guys. Wickedly Majestic Pocket Mermaid. Oh, it's cute. It's got long hair. So if you are interested at all in knitting toys, go take a peek for her, either on Ravelry, she has an Etsy shop, um, and check out her patterns. Hey, Zakia. So that's what I'm going to do with this pink. I think I'm going to do that little bunny because it'll be quick. My plan for this week is to finish up the one that I'm working on. So let me show it to you. He is still in pieces, but I am liking toy knitting. If you guys have heard me chat about toy knitting before, you'll know that I have well, I was going to say I've been on the fence, but honestly, I haven't been on the fence. I have definitely been on one side, and that was the non-toy knitting side. <laughs> hey, Therese, how are you? So, the, look at these. These are two little ears. I think it was, I had knit toys in the past. Like, we're talking years ago, years ago. And I think I just always found them really, really fiddly. And I just kind of got it in my head that this toy knitting was not my thing. And so when I would say that, every time Imagine Landscape would have a gnome knit along, I would look at them and think, oh my gosh, they are so cute. And But then I would immediately say, but I'm not a toy knitter. And when Cheryl was showing all of her really cute little stuffies and the, like two two podcasts we've been talking about and showing off her stuffies I'm like man they are so super cute and I thought why am I not a toy knitter like why do I have it stuck in my head that I cannot knit toys like this is just silliness right there's no new skills or anything different between knitting a sock or anything a sweater a cowl brioche I mean we do all those things so why can't I knit toys so I was all excited to give it a go again. This is what I've got. And whoops, I'm in pieces here, but I'll show you what I've started. <laughs> I posted a picture 
of the legs. And John from Codependent Knitters left, um, um, yes, a comment, a comment questioning these, <laughs> but they are legs and nothing else. So these, actually, these are going to be the two arms. And here, try to hold all this. Here is the little, this is the little pocket that is going to get attached to the front of him. So I've got to start on the body. I'm almost tempted to give him a pom-pom tail, even though he's an elf and elves don't have tails, but you know what? Elves are kind of magical creatures, so why can't they have a pom-pom tail, right? And there's his little legs. So I started weaving in some ends on the bottom of his feet. <laughs> Susanna, what are you saying? Are you saying yes to a pom-pom? And then this little pocket is a pocket that'll just get attached as I'm knitting the body. Okay, I gotta get rid of these ears. <laughs> So as I keep knitting around here, a few more rounds, eventually this pocket will get attached to the front. And then the arms that are here, they'll get knit in. Oh, Susanna's saying, yes, do a pom-pom. Yes, I know, I think I will. How can I not, right? I am the biggest pom-pom lover of all knitters of all time, I swear. So. <laughs> So you guys know it. You guys got the inside track. Wait till I put a pom-pom on here. Oh, oh, my cup. This one? I know. Well, ooh, and there's stuff in it. Okay, Suzanne, I'll take your, I'll move it over here. <laughs> so anyways, it is coming along great. I have just been sitting here watching Netflix and knitting a little body part one at a time. We started out doing four legs or four limbs, two legs, two arms. Then we did the ears and started the body. And it is so slick how she tells you to join the pieces on. I like that there's no sewing. I think Cheryl said that we'll have to sew the ears on, but I can handle that. I think it is going to be so cute. Hey, Karen, how are you? So this is it. I'm knitting it worsted weight yarn on a 3.75 millimeter needle. I did start out, I knit all of the limbs on four DPN, well, using five DPNs. It was very fiddly. You start out uh, with four stitches and then you do your increases. So it was fiddly but I managed. I did not even have to restart. I thought for sure, especially the first one, when I had um, only four stitches and you're trying to join in the round, <laughs> I thought for sure I was going to twist something. And you know what? And I'm actually on one of them, I might have. It might have been a little, I don't know if it's a little bumpy there, but I was like, I don't care. I just need to get this going and get it started. And it was really fun. Quick and easy to do. I can't wait to see it all finished and then put the uh, the face on it. But I did switch to Magic Loop when it came to doing the ears. I switched and then I and then I kept on with the bo with the body. So I think from now on if I make another one of these, I am just going to start on Magic Loop and not worry about the DPNs cuz it was a little fiddly and when you were knitting the leg I don't want to give too much away because it is a paid pattern but you know you only had a couple stitches on each um, each needle and so to knit you know a couple stitches switch needles knit a couple stitches switch needles was a little more fiddly than if I'd been doing it on magic loop so but totally doable I did it with no swearing I might add not one bad thought. Hey, Jocelyn. Hey, and Joanne. Not one bad thought and not one bad word have been uttered knitting this. Because, which is very good because I actually went back and I read the pattern, you know, which I do advocate doing before you start knitting. 
I sometimes bad for that. I just, I just like zoomed down to where it said cast on and I cast on and started. But I went back and I read the little introduction about this. This little elf is called the Guardian of Good Energy. So it's all initials if you're going to search it on Ravelry. So G O Guardian of Good. G O G E E. I always have to think about what there is if there's two G's or two E's. So two E's. Guardian of Good Energy Elf. So the initials. And so what it is talking about, no swearing. <laughs> Um, swearing just happens. I know. And I felt even especially proud of myself for not swearing knitting this little guy because the whole, her little blurby at the beginning of the pattern is saying that he's the guardian of good energy and about, yes, Susanna, thank you for typing it about how, you know, you're supposed to, with every stitch, feel the love and the joy and then the stuff you will embrace all of those wonderful thoughts and it's just about you know putting out good energy and receiving good energy back and that kind of thing and I thought boy darn good job I didn't swear starting these little legs because <laughs> so anyways it was really a lot of fun so my plan it well my plan was to have this finished being a holiday Monday it has kind of really got me off track because I'm still feeling like it's Sunday I really wanted to finish this on the weekend, start my new one for my during the week knitting. And then on the weekend, I want to knit some cactuses. If you guys are a member of the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In Facebook group, I think it was Diane posted a link to a Ravelry pattern. It has three different cactus patterns. And man, they are almost lifelike. They are fantastic. It's, it's like spring. It's gardening. I love houseplants. I think I have to attempt to knit these cactuses. And yes, they were knit, not crocheted. So that is my plan. A pink bunny and then a cactus on the weekend so I can try to get three. Well, not that I'm eligible for prizes, but I still, I just want bragging rights to be able to say that I got three projects done within 10 days. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Maybe I'm, maybe I have high hopes here, but, um, we'll see. And just as a side note to be eligible for prizes, you do not have to finish as long as you are, um, taking part, having fun, post on the Facebook group, cheer other people on come Monday, May 31st, when the knit along closes, post a picture of your progress in the finished thread because you know i i can't um oh valerie i'll shimmer you on thank you <laughs> you know i don't want to be a little hypocritical here and say only finishes can be eligible because we all know that i am not the best finisher <laughs> so we want to encourage everything everybody just to have fun so if you are at all interested if you've been thinking about toys if you have a toy pattern in your library or if you're just hearing me talk and thinking boy this sounds like a lot of fun just a little project to take outside and knit take it to work with you whatever the place may be cast it on there's still time Oh, Jocelyn, you haven't started yet either. Well, you know what? We've got all week to get started and you have all weekend and next Monday. So there is still lots of time. Um, and for the most part, depending on, unless Susanna, it was you that talked about an eight foot dinosaur pattern. So unless you're picking that one, there's a really good chance um, you can get something finished. I have high hopes. Look, I still haven't finished one and I already have two more on my list. Oh, oh, what's that? A hippo, Susanna saying. That's, a, I can't wait. And it's super fun just to see the pictures that everybody is doing. Karen finished her Harry Potter owl, which looks super great. There has been an Elmo finished. Amber finished another of these little Guardian of Good Energy guys. I saw Cheryl this morning. She was working on the head of hers, so hers is almost finished. Um, 
there's been some dinosaurs. There's, there's been lots of fun, fun things. So that's it for toy knitting. I think I am, oh, by Lolo did it. Oh, that's, oh, the pattern, the, the hippo pattern is by her. It wasn't that interesting. I didn't know she had patterns too. So anyways, it has been a lot of fun just seeing everybody's progress and the fact that I can now very happily say that I am a toy knitter. Now I also am thinking at some point I want to do um, gnomes. That's what I want to say. This little guy. Oh, he's not in the screen tonight. Cheryl knit me this gnome a few years ago for Christmas. And he has just always sat out because I just thought he is so cute. So this is Imagined Landscapes, Never Not Gnoming. And she has a mystery knit along going on right now. And she does those. I don't know how often she does them, if they're once a year, maybe. And the pattern she comes up with is just boggles my mind because I think I would come up with a gnome and I'd be like, okay, well, there's a gnome. <laughs> Move on to a bunny or something, right? But she keeps coming up with all of these different gnomes and uh, they're just so, so cute. And I love how there are mysteries. So different clues come out at different times. So if you're looking on Instagram, you'll see um, kind of a little spoiler and you scroll and then you see the different um, sections, what people have gotten it. So it's really, really fun. I'm just going to go take a look back here in some of the, some of the comments. Oh, Jocelyn, Wednesday you're going to cast on for the, the dragon. I look forward to seeing pictures. So Zakia, you said you haven't got any toys started. Oh, but a new, so you got distracted by a new sock. That is totally understandable. Oh, so Jocelyn, so you're thinking about the gnomes too? I know. We should just start them all, right? Oh, did I see somebody start saying about a test knit? Oh, Valerie, you're working on a test knit and you have four sweater whips. Well, then maybe I'm thinking you need a little project, a little toy project in between all of those big ones. You might need something like a, a palette cleanser, something little, something port well, port portable as if we're going anywhere. And most of us are not going too far yet these days, are we? But um, anyways, you know, now that, now that I am so excited about something, you know, I have to try to encourage everybody else to be as excited, right? <laughs> Okay, so North, okay, Jocelyn, you're saying it's one of Imagine Landscape's gnomes. Oh, you think you should make it? Oh, both Manitoba. Yes, that's right. And it feels, well, I, you're right. Yes, because she is, yes, she's Canadian. She's from Manitoba. You guys are in the same province. Yes, Jocelyn, you really should be supportive. <laughs> Get that gnome on the needle there, girl. Oh, Zakia, you're always distracted. Oh, you don't want to try starting a stuffy at work. Oh, oh, so you took self strike. So yeah, well, you kind of need a little bit of concentration, right? And when, and because it's not something you're doing all the time, you got to keep referring to the pattern and keeping track of your rows and all that kind of stuff. What did I, oh. So yeah, it's not like a sock where you can just take your needles, cast on, you don't need to worry about anything, right? Hey, Emma, you can just, you know, lit on, knit on your lunch break. You can just do your thing, right? All right. So that's that for toy knitting. So show me some pictures of your toys and yeah, have fun. I'm excited for the rest of this week, seeing what people are doing. And I'm hoping now that some people have finished that maybe they'll be casting on a second project. I'm going to start posting some links, probably even tonight, some of the patterns that I have like fallen in love with. I'm going to post the links in the Facebook group, the Fiber Friends Facebook group. So what what's the word I want to say? So I can encourage just, um, I don't want to use the word enable, but that's what keeps popping up in my head. I just want to be, people to see what there is now that 
because I had always thought I wasn't a toy knitter, I just kind of, I never looked. I didn't realize that there are a lot of different designers. Um, okay, two, two designers that I found while I was looking on Ravelry, Mary Jane's Tea Room, Tea Room, Mary Jane's Tea Room. You guys, if you like knitting toys, go give her a quick look up because she had bear. I saw all I looked, I saw bears and she has dolls and there was something else because she has a website as well. Um, and she has little clothes patterns for them too. Really, really, really cute. I also saw another lady on Ravelry. Actually, I found her on Instagram. Dancing Sarah Tops. I think that's what the name is. I, mm, I'll have to post something or leave a comment down below under this. Dancing Triceratops Designs. And she had this cutest little dinosaur. It was, it was sweet. So for anybody who likes dinosaurs, there's two people you could go, go check out. Hi, Sherry. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Will there be a dead? You know what? Yes. You know what? We're going to try. I didn't try it for this one because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Hopefully for our next challenge in June, I'm going to try to figure out a way if to see if we can just do it all on Ravelry, but I didn't figure it out in time for this one. So Sherry, if you take part or for anybody who doesn't use Ravelry, post in the, the Fiber Friends Facebook group and make sure you tag me and post a picture of your finish. And, um, and then make sure I answer you back. So then what I will do when, when, once I say, you know, I'll say, got you or wrote your name or whatever. Um, then I will just kind of add you into the list. So when I do the random number generator on Ravelry, anybody who doesn't, who is, doesn't use Ravelry, who sent me a message, I'll make sure I add you in. So then you can get a number and you can be part of the draw. That's what I'm going to do to try to fix that this time. So you can't find the Facebook group. Did I say it right? Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In. And it's a, it's a private group, so you have to answer the questions. So just make sure you at least answer one of them, because if you don't answer them, you don't get in. <laughs> just, I just want to make sure that as real people, so far, fingers crossed, we haven't had any spam or any bots or any anything get into the group and it's I feel bad declining people but if you don't answer questions I don't let you in so answer the questions because <laughs> I feel bad um declining people I'm inspiring people to craft that's right I'm not enabling inspiring that's a much better much much better term huh <sighs> Okay, I've got two more things to talk to you guys about, but I'm gonna have a quick drink first. Last week's project. I didn't get a whole lot done on it, but it started. So remember last week was the two, the two colors, uh-oh. The two colors that I put up in the, the poll. I knew I wanted to use gray and I asked you guys about the navy or the purple and the purple was the winner. So these are also both Patton's Classic Will because I have to knit the stash. <laughs> and you guys also, last week I had two poles up and it was either another pot holder or a hat and everybody must have been tired of seeing pot holders because almost everybody voted for hat. So here... It's just a little bit of a start of a hat. I have not got too far because I got distracted by the toy knitting. So, and, and my sweater, my summer sweater for Jocelyn and I's knit along. So anyways, oh, we might as well, we can take a peek at the inside too. So there's my stranded. And just the start of the pattern. I honestly, I had a bit of a hard time kind of coming up with a pattern design that I wanted to use on this. And I, uh, but I'm liking it. 
So I just, I just put a little just miscellaneous. I just kind of wanted something as a border. So what it is, it's a square and then it's got a little, a little stitch on each corner. And then up here, I'm just going to do a chevron pattern. Now, and I'm totally making this up as I go because I put, did one full pattern repeat here and thought, oh, I really like this. I think I'm just going to carry on. So I've started another one. I did one round in between and then started the pattern again. So we'll see. I'm not sure. I may just keep doing this and then end with this up at the top. We'll see. I really, I really like chevron diamondy kind of kind of patterns so anyways that's it and i know amber had said that the gray and the purple reminded her of western colors the university in our city and so now that's every time i look at it that's all i can think of is western colors which is not a bad thing so that is that it's on the needles hopefully it'll be finished for next monday I know, I just love chevrons. I could knit chevrons every project. <laughs> oh, Jocelyn, doesn't hurt that you love purple and gray. Well, I know, they do kind of, it does look nice together. You guys, I mean, purple or um, gray and navy looks good too, but it's kind of nice. I've done that, I've done the navy. Hi, Anne. Oh, thank you. I know, I'm liking it. I think it'll turn out nice. And I think my gauge, I just kind of went with my gauge. Oh, Teresa, you like the colors? Thanks. Yeah, I'm happy. Well, you guys picked them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I just basically did a gauge to garment kind of thing on here. I knew I wanted, I'm going for 19 inches around. So it'll be, it'll fit snug because we're going to have, you know, you've got a, I always want a couple of inches negative ease. My, he my head around is 21 inches. So that's why I was going with 19. Figured out, I used my gauge on the pot holder that I did last week. So I used, I figured I had five stitches to the inch. So I used five stitches times 19 inches. That gave me the stitch count that I needed. And I just adjusted it by a couple of stitches so that I could do a two by two ribbing. So I had to have a number that was divisible by four, a cast on number divisible by four. I did the crocheted tubular cast on. So I was using my crochet hook for this, you guys. Does that really count? Doing the, the crochet tubular cast on, does that count as actually crochet skills? I'm saying it does because it involves holding a crochet hook and hooking the yarn and pulling it through his loop. So <laughs> I know it barely does, right? I may be um, pushing the envelope on that one to say that it's actually crocheting, but it's making me feel like I'm crocheting and it's making me feel good. So we're going to go with that. I'm, I'm honing my crochet skills with this cast on. So anyways, I like this cast on. I, to be honest, I started it. Oh, absolutely counts, Lisa. You are a sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> I actually, when I pulled out the gray and got ready to cast on, don't, don't judge me, you guys. I couldn't find a crochet hook. <laughs> so I thought, uh, oh, Ter Teresa saying it counts too. Wonderful. <laughs> you guys are the best. So I actually started and just thought, oh, well, Oh, Susanna agrees too. Wonderful. So I couldn't find a crochet hook because, you know, like within arm's reach, I'm sitting here and I've got shelves all around me and I'm like, oh, there's no crochet hook. And I thought, oh, hey, Kim, you love the color combo? Thank you. I know. I think it's turning out really well too. And I just thought, oh, well, I don't have a crochet hook. I'll just do a long tail. So I started to do the long tail and you know what? I looked at it and I'm like, oh, I do not like this. And I know I don't like it. Because, the, you know, the long tail kind of gives you that rope look all around the bottom. And that just, it bugs me to have that solid rope look when you've got ribbing. And I mentioned that to somebody else at one time, probably in one of my classes or at a knit night. I think it was a knit night. 
And they said, you know what? They actually really like the look of that rope. And I'm like, so there you go. Personal preference. But I know for me, I don't particularly care for it in ribbing. So I pulled it out, went and hunted down a crochet hook. And I have no idea what size it is. It's probably technically way too big. I don't know. A six or a nine. I don't even know what that means. Anyways, I had a crochet hook and I figured the size wouldn't matter because I'm just casting on, right? And a 4.5 millimeter needle for the ribbing because I wanted it to be smaller than the needle size I was going to use for the body. And believe it or not, I went up to a six millimeter. That's what I'm using here. It's quite large for worsted weight, but with stranded, you typically have to go up a needle size anyways, because um, strand, it's tighter. It's tighter. So it affects your gauge. You don't get the same gauge as you would with regular stockinette stitch. Oh, look at those points. This is probably why I don't get a lot of knitting done because I spend a lot of time admiring what I have just worked. Um, but anyway, so six millimeter, I'm carrying one color in each hand. And if you guys were here when we talked about the color work, feral knitting, stranded work, whatever term you want to use. If you want to have that one color kind of pop a little bit more, which is typically you want that to be your contrast color, which is my purple, you want to hold it in your left hand. Or if you want to hold both strands in one on one finger, you want your contrast to be to the left. If I was going to switch this and hold them in my right hand, I would switch them around. So, no, there, left. You always want it to the left because <laughs> you want it carrying under. But I like to do it one in each hand because that's the way I'm the fastest. If I was to try, and this is kind of on my bucket list, should I try it right now? What's my pattern? Okay, are you guys ready? I'm gonna try this. I haven't tried this in a long time. So here I'm, I'm gonna hold my strand. So I've got both on my left finger, the purple. I'm not sure if this is probably backwards to you, but if you can envision this is on my finger, this is my left side. So my contrast color is on the left of my main color. I'm gonna see if I can, I would really like to perfect, oh my gosh, maybe this isn't gonna be so hard. Okay, I've done two stitches and now all of a sudden I think I'm a pro. <laughs> this is not that hard. Oh my gosh. This is not that hard, you guys. So there you go. Try something. Oh, except I think my tension's way tight. Because I probably have a death grip on this yarn. <laughs> I can tell it's a little tight because I'm, I'm typically, I'm a loose knitter. So maybe I won't carry on. Or let me see if I can try not to strangle the poor yarn. But I had thought, tip for tension on the two strands. Yes, Valerie, I'm all for it. Because this is one thing that I would, like I said, it's kind of on my bucket list for color work knitting, was to hold both, both strands in my left hand. Because when I was in Norway, this is how everybody, practically everybody was knitting color work there when I was there. And I remember going to the fiber festival and people were just sitting around knitting. A lot of, a lot of it was color work wrapped, wrapped two strands over the pinky. Okay. Yeah. And I've got it wrapped nowhere, Valerie. Okay. Two strands around the pinky. And so anyways, so I was doing color work at the time cause I had bought new yarn and I was working on color work mittens. And of course I was holding a strand in each hand and I'm sure that split with middle finger, split with middle finger. <laughs> split with middle finger. Okay, Valerie, I'm trying this. So anyways, so I'm sure they were looking at me like I had two heads thinking, why in the world is she holding a strand in each hand, right? So I thought, I would really like to, oh, you guys, this is not, 
Am I holding it up high enough? So you just have to watch, make sure you catch the right strand. Come here. And then three purples. A little bit of practice and I can do this. All right. A little bit of practice maybe because now I'm having a hard time. There we go. I got it. All right. But <laughs> look how tight. I can see the difference in my stitches. These ones here. Can you see? Look, they have room. They're moving on the needle. These last three, can you see how tight they are? I can see a visible difference on the needle there. <laughs> so maybe I, maybe I won't carry on with that. Maybe, maybe the next project I will start, maybe I'll do, hmm, I don't know. I was going to say, what's the, I guess there's not really much difference. Is there between a hat or a pothole? Well, there is no difference because I definitely need practice. You're right. Um, because this I could totally because I, I knit my, my pot holders the exact same way 16 inch needle and then Kitchener stitch so maybe my next I guess I'm thinking a pot holder if my tension's wonky and it changes the size of the pot holder it's not going to make a difference because that's a pot holder but yeah I think I will just stick with one color in each hand for this project just so I don't totally mess up my tension but it's doable. Okay, so there you go, guys. If I can try it live when I could totally have messed it up, you guys should be able to try it at home, right? Try something new. Try something new. Okay, speaking of trying something new, now this I will totally flop in front of you all. But I'm, I have already come to terms with that is probably what's going to happen with this next experiment. But I'm going to try it anyways. We were chatting... Sunday. Cheryl and I went live in the Fiber Friends Facebook group just to chat with everybody who was doing toy knitting because we started the toy knit along Friday. We podcasted Saturday and then we thought we would come in Saturday and just chit chat with everybody for a little while. Show progress. I was asking Cheryl a little bit about stuffing the toys. Like, do you know, how do you overfill? Do you, we were talk, talking about different things that you can use for stuffing. Somebody said that they, in a pinch, had used plastic bags and that that worked all right. Other people were talking about using wool, like little, your strands of yarn, if you've got leftover yarn, you know, like little bits. And, Sh and Cheryl said, yeah, just like, you know, cross stitchers, when you save all your little ends, when you snip your ends off, they always save them, put them in little jars and have all, end up with all these ends. Well then, didn't somebody mention that Arna and Carlos, they save all of their wool ends and they card them. Well, this was total news to me because I had never heard them talk about that before. It was like the heavens opened and it was just like an aha moment. I'm like, what? You can card yarn? So Asa linked one of Arna and Carlos's videos and I watched it and they did. They just kind of quickly carded it and kind of fluffed it up and then they used it to stuff. They had either a Christmas ball or one of their birds. I think it was a bird. And, uh, and Carlos was using the yarn bits. So you guys know me, right? I have to try this where pretty much the whole consensus of everybody on the live video was like, mm, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, not going to worry about that. Not going to do it. You know, if I have little ends, I'll just use these. And of course I had Carter's already. Hey, Kathy, how are you? So I pulled out my Carter's. My Carter's have, I like I've used them once because I'm not really, I'm a want to be spinner not really and haven't really ever needed to to card fleece so these are probably pretty much brand new and we'll see what happens so of course i thought I need, i'm going to try carding this i have no idea what i'm doing 
So be prepared. This could be a total blooper. But we're going to try it because you never know until you try it. I have no idea how much to put on here. Maybe less is more. I don't know. We'll put a couple. We'll put a little more on. So some of this was actual, actual real tails that I had. I don't know what the blue came. What did I knit with the blue? I'm not even sure. But I did have a little pile of tails already sitting around here. And some of it I just cut up to pretend it was tails. Okay. So we'll see. Mary. I think Mary said that some of it, I don't know. Am I making, ooh, it's looking a little fuzzy. It's looking fuzzy. I think maybe I need more. I, we'll see. Mary said some yarn cards really well. Others you need a lot of muscle power. Okay. I'll give you a, sorry, is this noisy? Kind of, oh, I think it might be doing something. Now I'm going to, oh, oh, it did. It just pulled it all off here. I'm just kind of going by what, what Arna was doing in the, you know, five minute video that I watched. That's all the experience that I have. I'm going to try putting this on here again, kind of fluffing it up and putting it on again. Has anybody else tried this? Am I totally bonkers? Now, what I'm actually thinking, this will really, I know, I know what your reaction is going to be when I tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyways, because my first thought is that, yes, I could card this and use it as stuffing as opposed to like the polyfill, but my brain is already a step ahead of that. And I'm thinking if I card all these little bits of ends, I could spin this and make new yarn with it, you guys. <laughs> well, I know it is so fun. I love trying something new. And if it works, that's fantastic. If it doesn't, well, at least you know, right? Sherry, you're currently... <gasps> what? No way. Sherry, you guys, did you just read that? Sherry is doing that with cotton balls. Sherry. You 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 are you are carding cotton balls to spin cotton. Get out. See, I had my brain hadn't even gone that far. Um Ooh, so what okay, so H HHF. What is what is HHF, Valerie? What is that short for? I feel like I should know, but I don't. Is wanting yarn scraps for their new yarn. What? Oh, so somebody else is doing this too? That's awesome. They will give you discounts on new orders for scanning in scraps. What? Hedge oh, hedgehog fibers. Oh, see, I knew I should have known what that was. Look, you guys, I think it's actually doing it. Okay. This may be a little labor intensive. Hedgehog fibers. Thank you, Emma. But think of the color combinations you could come up with. Well, I have, look, I'm in, I'm feeling like I'm in very good company. If Hedgehog Fibers is doing this, look, look, oh my gosh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay. Who else? Does anybody else have Carters at home? I know I was kind of, I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't have Carters, but uh oh, did I do this right? <laughs> I know the simple things get me excited, I tell you. But isn't this amazing? Okay, I think I'm doing it backwards now. Okay, I think I need to do something. I know. Anyways. Oh, you sold yours, Valerie? You sold your Carters? Oh, no. I hope this isn't making you regret that. <laughs> I 
<laughs> so Jocelyn, just watching me struggle with this, you're like, yeah, no, I'll just, I'll just go to Walmart, um, Fabricland or Joann's, Michael's, and buy polyfill. <laughs> oh, Kim, you do it too, but you use a blending board. See, you know what? Now, I maybe, am I going to need a blending board now? I have seen the blending board down at Little Red Mitten, and I know they sell them. But I thought, you know, I thought, oh, si silly me now. I thought, why would I need a blending board? Because I don't really spin. But look at that. There's just proof. You always need everything. <laughs> oh, Valerie, once you you process entire fleece, holy smokes. That's, I, I, ha I have some fleece in the basement. Yeah. And you knit it and you haven't done it again. But was it, was it a good thing? Do you feel, are you happy that you did the whole process? Valerie, you'd rather knit. <laughs> I know. I should probably be knitting too. This is why my toy is not done yet. Because I get distracted. But. Okay, I want to get this into actual fluffiness. Bye. Okay. This could count as exercise. I think I'm going to be building some arm muscles here too. This is like talk about, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Can I tell him, does this count as exercise when he asks me if I'm exercising? <laughs> I'll just tell him I'm doing some arm workout. I won't tell him what I'm doing because then he'll really think I'm bonkers. Actually, he won't have a clue, but anyways. Okay, look, that is almost there. Okay, so it's a little bit of a process. And maybe some, like my gray, well, no, the pink, I don't know. I was going to say, maybe it is maybe it is true, like what Mary said, some yards are easier to curve than others. Oh, Emma, okay, so Knitting Expat made her own. The link is in the video. Okay. See, look at this. Hey, Antoinette. How did I just like not know about this? I feel like I'm late to the party here, you guys. Okay, so Val, you want to understand the process and the effort <laughs> of days gone by. Don't regret it, but it was a lot of work, I bet. But I think that would be, I would like to do that too. And I do, I have fleece in the basement, which should surprise none of you. So someday, I would like to do the same thing, Valerie, just for fun. Did Now, did you dye it as well, or did you just um, use the natural fiber? Okay. This blue piece is not doing its thing. Okay. Well, I think I'm making progress. I really, you guys, you guys all know I am going to spin with this, right? I'm going to use my drop spindle. I have to. I could not, not, I could not do this and not spin it. Oh, so Valerie, what, you still die today? That's good. Then you'll be ready because this summer we're going to do a dying weekend again. Kathy, I have a lot of fleece. Yes, I do have a lot of fleece. Someday, someday that'll be, that'll be our, our, our challenge. Well, for me at least. I guess I can't exactly challenge everybody to do a fleece. But anyways, okay, I think this is such success, you guys. It is going to take a lot of ends to maybe I'll be able to spin and... I'll be able to spin and make my own coaster <laughs> out of my recycled yarn. But look at that. Back to how the yarn started. I think that is amazing. Maybe I will use some of this as stuffing. Oh, it is very soft. All right. I'm calling this a success. I think I'm going to do more of this. I think I will. Maybe when I need a break. I don't know. 
And I told, and I actually was prepared for this to be a total disaster and to not work at all. But look at that. Who needs to buy polyfill, Jocelyn? I may, well, I don't know. It's going to take a lot, take a lot of ends. I guess this is just going to be more incentive for me to get more knitting done, finish up balls of yarn, cut off the ends. And then card them. Now I, I need to have a special spot to keep this. My reclaimed fleece. So I can re-spin it. This is going to be a fun project, you guys. I'm, I'm actually really, really looking forward to this now. I've got some more. A little bit of ends. So I think I need to find two pretty containers. One for the reclaimed carding. And one to keep all my ends in. Now I can't believe how many ends... I have thrown away <sighs> over uh, over the years that I could have had. But anyways, I guess don't think backwards, only look forward, right? From here on out, my carters have now truly been christened. I need a fleece room. <laughs> you know what I do? I have over here, so over here, I have I have a cabinet that has doors on it and it is my fleece cabinet. It's filled with fleece that I've bought at different fiber festivals and um, my drop spindles. I think that's a good question. Where are my drop spindles? I'll have to, I guess I'll have to find that before I can spin anything. Hopefully they're in the cupboard too. Um, yeah, so you're right. I will. <laughs> I know my one cupboard is already bursting. The doors barely close and I have two boxes of fleece from Wellington fibers that didn't fit in the cabinet. So, and here I am making my own from waste yarn. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't need to do that. I don't need to do it, but it is fun. So, hey, I'm glad that you guys got to witness this in action. Oh, Therese, you give your ends to the birds. Yes. Well, we were, we were actually talking about that too, about, yeah, and making sure that what you have to cut them really short, don't you? Because there were some talk about like long ends can actually harm baby birds. Either they try to eat it or it gets wrapped around their neck. So yeah, I know, but there is, yeah, I guess as long as we, we do something right, we do, we do some recycling with it. Now I, I just don't want to throw it away. So before we wrap up here, we've been almost an hour. So what is everybody working on this week? Is anybody else doing toy knitting? And you string your ends on the trees and shrubs for birds to build their nests. Yes. And believe or not. Oh, and they always, I'm sure they will take it. Yeah. So isn't, yes. Yeah, so is anybody else doing any toy knitting or are you working on, okay, Trish, yeah, you cut them very short. Good. Antoinette socks. Sue. Oh, dryer lint is great for birds. Yes. See, that's another good thing that doesn't have to go in the garbage. That's a great idea. Yes. Cause we all have a lot of that, don't we? Laundry is a never ending, ending job. Well, I'm excited. I'm really excited about this. But anyways, toy knitting. That's going to be my focus. Oh, oh, more socks there. So is that Nere? So oh, oh, okay, socks. Yes, Kim. Oh, two summer tops. And one's going to be a gift. Good for you. Lisa, what are you working on? Oh, Oh, you're doing the gnome. Oh, yes. The gnome mystery knit along and you're making a bonbon bunny. Good. Don't sew your, <laughs> don't sew your feet on backwards or attach them backwards. Rita was saying on Sunday that she attached one of her, one of her legs backwards. So she was joking. She said he now has a club foot. <laughs> so just be careful. And you know what? And for mine, when I was attaching mine, I almost attached one of mine backwards and the and it wouldn't, and the, the feet are the same shape, but what it is is on the top of the leg, one has is stockinette, and on the flip side, it has the pearl bumps. And I, when I first slipped it on the needle, I wasn't paying attention and I had it backwards with the pearl bumps, but luckily I caught it. 
before I actually attached it. So, but you know, and we were saying, you know, and even if they're not perfect, a child is going to love them anyways, right? Valerie, just split for sleeves on the bottom up. Lacy fingering weight sweater. Oh, that's a big project. Lisa, are you enjoying the gnome knit along? I'm sure you probably are. Emma, you're finishing the back of your sweater. Oh, that, oh, that you just started last Thursday? Holy smokes, woman. Good for you. The sleeves are done and the front welt is done. My gosh, you are like zooming along on that. Fantastic. Sherry, you've got so many whips. Oh, but you did buy new yarn in a pattern book. Well, of course we do. Oh, to what is that toadstool cottage stuffies? Oh, goodness. Oh, good, Sherry. Okay, I can't wait to see some pictures. And, oh, you're finishing your memory blanket. Three mini skeins left and it's done. That is super, super close. Are you going to be sad when it's done? All that work, all that time, and it'll be done. It's like coming to the end of a good book and you don't want it to end. Wanda, you're working. Hi, Wanda. Working on a blank. Oh, yes, your great, oh, great granddaughter. Oh, she's supposed to arrive in July. How exciting. And then maybe do a bunny afterwards. That would be so sweet. Sabrina, you're working on the vanilla socks. Oh, and the hat. Nice. That's good. Two easy portable projects. Jocelyn, you give your natural bowl. Oh, yes. Okay, so we were, um, Heather from Timber Yarns, we were chatting with her on a Zoom call, and she was talking about all of her little, because she will have all kinds of odd ends left over from dyeing. And she was saying how she puts them in the compost too. But when we, yeah, so some of her wool ends, which is a great idea. Oh, half moon tea. Yay. Good for you, Jocelyn. Lisa, you're liking the knit along. Fantastic. Sue, you just started a fingering weight cardigan for your younger sister. Well, you are a sweetheart. Kathy, thanks for the laughs. Hey. <laughs> Anytime, anytime. I'll be back here again next Monday. You can join in again and maybe, well, no, I'm not going to have enough yarn carded. I was like, it's going to take a lot of yarn to card and to get ready for spinning. But mark my words, at some point, we are going to, do, we are going to spin some of this reclaimed brand new, brand new recycled yarn. That sounds like an oxymoron, but my recycled yarn you guys, I am really excited about this. Really, really excited about this. So stay tuned because that will be happening at some point. Maybe I'll have to find some like really pretty containers and I'll have to remember to show you that next week. Oh my goodness, the simplest things make me happy. I know it's ridiculous. But anyways, guys, the hour is now up. It sounds like everybody is working on some really fantastic projects. So I hope you get lots of time this week to knit. And uh, yeah, and if you're, you're members of the Fiber Friends, post them over there. Even if it's not toys, post over there so we can, uh, um, everybody can see them over in the Fiber Friends group. Huh. I have to go knit now. I don't know what, <laughs> I've got too many projects. I've got a hat. I better finish my toy. Better finish my toy. We'll see. Maybe the toy. I haven't worked on my toy yet too much today. So I think my toy is what I will go knit on you guys. So thanks. Hey, Joanne. I know you're probably working on your sweater, right? So everybody, thanks so much for visiting with me and encouraging me to, um, just to keep doing all, try all these different things and share them with you. So it's always fun chatting with you. So I will see you all next Monday. Happy knitting, everybody. Have a great week.